Hi, welcome to the fifth screencast in the Eastern Ahead series, a part of Eastern Kentucky University's initiative to improve retention efforts through ever-improving advising, and specific to our purposes, through an increasing understanding of how the Student Success Collaborative can help in advising and retention efforts. The last couple screencasts have focused on building lists, a list of your advisees, separate lists for each of the classes you teach. You might also have experimented with some of the parameter options to put together a list of several sections of a course, or to see students in a particular course or program or major over time, or to filter by degree or GPA, or any of the other limits the Student Success Collaborative offers. In this screencast, we will explore more deeply the contents of an individual student's record, so you can see the usefulness of the collected information and envision scenarios where you might use such information to support a student's academic progress. We'll look first at a student. I'm going to choose the first one on my advising list, who happens to be identified as low risk. That'll keep us from getting distracted by the risks and trying to plot interventions that will benefit that student. We'll get to that kind of stuff later on. With this student's record, though, we see on the main overview page her cumulative GPA, here, and her total credits, here. One important note is that this total does not include the current semester, which DegreeWorks does. Moving down this page, I see the student's current major, and when applicable, previous majors. I also see several of those most common descriptors under the additional information section. Things like whether the student is on campus or online, or which campus the student is on. I also see the student's ethnicity. I see her complete list of advisors here and here and here. I see whether she has received scholarships. If I look at a couple of other students to show that additional information section, then I see things like an expected graduation date, and the fact that this student is a transfer. If I look at another student, I see that this student is on academic probation, and I see the residence hall for this student who happens to live on campus. In other words, I see the kind of stuff that we might make small talk about when meeting with a student for advising, and also the kind of stuff that makes so much difference toward a student's academic success. Now I'm going to go back to that original student. And I want to explore the sidebars a little bit. On this left-hand side, I have the ID number and the date of birth at the top. I see the student just had a birthday recently. And I see key information below, including multiple forms of contact, multiple emails, a home and mobile phone number, and also a home address. In between those two parts, I have four or five different tabs. The overview, which is the automatic one that comes up first, and then also success progress, term details, history, and one called major explorer. Let's look at each of those real quickly. If I click on the success progress tab, then I have two different things that are of interest. One, I have credits by term, and then I have the student's cumulative GPA. Both of these give you a little more information when you mouse over them. I can see how many hours attempted and how many hours completed for each term the student has, has had. And then I also see the progress, the upward trajectory in this case that I like, of the student's cumulative GPA. If I go to the next section, term details, then what I have here is a really useful real-time transcript. This even includes midterm grades for the current semester, and it includes the chance to interact by clicking on a term's View More button. This shows me trend lines so that I see a sense of the progress that the student is making. I always like to see an upward arrow there, for example. I can also click on the History button, and I see the, the most important notes that have been recorded. If there is a major change, I'll see that. If there's an email sent through the collaborative to the student, if there is, um, here you see that I tested it just a few minutes ago uh, when I started this. 
And so you have a record of those notes in one convenient location. Easy reference, and I'll show you more about that later on. Finally, on this side, I want to show you the Major Explorer tab. Major Explorer is for those students maybe who aren't low risk because they seem pretty locked in as this student is in her major. But maybe it's for those students who have experienced some success in some classes but have not experienced as much success in some of the classes that would indicate progress toward graduation in the student's current chosen major. So what I have here with the current major is English teaching in this case. Below that I have major options. And what's nice about this is that I see not just the major, but also careers that have been identified by the Education Advisory Board for that major. And so this is the kind of thing that you might talk about with students when they come and sit down and they say, I'm thinking about changing my major. This gives you data that supports the choices a student might make or the recommendations that you might want to give. I'll go to another student to show you how this might work. For other students. There's a student who's at moderate risk in English teaching and if I go to the major explorer for her then I have other choices that she might be able to consider and uh, sometimes this is not listed as unknown risk but instead correlates this moderate risk to a low, moderate, or high risk for that particular major. I'll say that I don't know why it's uh, not showing that particular demarcation now. Hopefully when you get on and you explore with some of your students, you'll have that information. Also, I want to show you this other sidebar. If we go back to that original student again, there she is. Then you see several things listed down this side, and we will end with this by, by talking about, first of all, a detail that we'll have covered in the next screencast, and that is adding to watch list. We have the choice to change a student's status. If you click on that, you have a range of choices. I can update a student's status in three ways, indicating that I've reviewed a record, attempted to contact the student, or advised a student. I can also set reminders, set reminders so that I can do one of those three things, review, attempt to contact, or advise sometime in the future. And I can also mark a status public or private. Remember that the Student Success Collaborative is not student facing. Public means other advisor types can see the note. Private means that only I will have access to that information. Also, I can email a student directly from this screen. There comes that email, simply connected to Outlook. I can also set a reminder to follow up. I can choose a date, and again, I can mark that public or private. I can add the note there of what I want to be reminded about. And I can add a note on this student. And it's real simple. I can add, it's totally general. I can add anything I need to. And again, mark that public or private and save that note. So based on this, the overview page, this sidebar on the left, and then the options on this sidebar to the right, you should have a pretty good sense of what an individual student success collaborative record contains. And hopefully, you're already envisioning some ways that you might use it to support your students' success.